Uh, we've got a huge deal this morning. Southeast Asia's Grab is going public via SPAC. It is merging with Brad Gerstner's Tumor Growth Corporation. It is the largest SPAC merger to date, uh, representing an expected equity valuation of nearly $40 billion. It's going to generate approximately $4.5 billion in cash proceeds to Grab. Tumor is committing $750 million of the $4 billion pipe. There's a lot of other big investors involved in this one, jumping in now on the D-SPAC, including BlackRock, Fidelity, and T. Rowe Price. And joining us right now, first on CNBC, is Grab CEO and co-founder Anthony Tan. It is great to have Anthony on the program. Congratulations on this transaction. I've known Anthony for quite some time, uh, so I, I must just personally congratulate you, because uh, I know this is a milestone and something that you've been looking forward to uh, for quite some time, Anthony. Um, let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what you're going to do with the cash and, and, and what this company looks like going forward. For those who are uninitiated, this really is a super app. You almost own uh, the Southeast uh, Asia economy when it comes to uh, travel in the sort of Uber-like space for those folks who are trying to comp it to the United States, the, eats, the eating space, the online mobile, uh, online mobile banking space. Um, what, what does this business look like today in a post-pandemic world, given that we've uh, just been getting some numbers from the likes of Uber and others uh, about what's happening? Hey, really, Andrew, it's a pleasure to be here. And good morning to all of you. And just to quickly share, you know, I remember years ago when we were talking to investors, some folks didn't even know where Southeast Asia was on a map. So you're right. Today, as we announced, what is expected to be the largest U.S. equity offering in Southeast Asia, uh, or, or by a Southeast Asian company, is really a proud moment. And it just shows this validation, validation of the tremendous opportunity right here in this region, and that the super app strategy works. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, Andrew, you, you talked about the super app strategy. Would you mind if I just quickly give a quick intro on what it is? Yeah. To tell people because we don't have a super app here in the United States, so some people may be unfamiliar. Sure. So, Andrew, think about it this way. In, in Southeast Asia, you book the car with Grab, you're ordering your food with Grab, you're investing with Grab in the car with $1, you're buying insurance, uh, you're paying your bills all in one app. What, but what's more interesting is actually on the driver side. The driver has a super app, and the driver ha is able to toggle between food delivery, grocery delivery, helping you with domestic remittances, uh, with, with multiple jobs. So that way, the driver has very little dead time. And when a driver has very little dead time, it's, much, it's just much more efficient delivery network. And these savings are passed on to the consumer. And then when the consumer is happy, they, more comes on, more merchants come on because they want more business. And as more merchant selection grows, more consumers come on. Anthony, speak to the competitive environment in Southeast Asia right now, because you're right. You are the market leader in all of these different spaces. And in certain certain instances, like like uh, food delivery, you crush the competition. The, the question I, I, I would ask that I, I know investors are, I imagine, thinking about are, are others going to either come into this space to try to disrupt you at this point? Well, first of all, we respect our peers uh, tremendously. It's really not easy to get here. But just to state matter of fact, we are the category leader. We are the regional leader, uh, whether it's in Indonesia or across the region, in food delivery, in ride hailing, and in mobile payments. And one key reason is because we've been able to not only build just for Indonesia, but also across the region. We've diversified across the region. So we've been really resilient. Even in the toughest times during COVID, we're able to pivot our driver supply to do other jobs. So if you look at, there's no one country that makes up more than 35% of our total revenues. So having that resilience and that regional diversification has really helped us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.